When it comes to screens, we all know there's some people out there that just want the absolute biggest screen possible. Now, if that's you, you probably don't want a TV. You might want to consider getting a projector. Hi, everybody. It's Andy Barrar, a.k.a. Handy Andy, your DIY tech guy from HandyAndyMedia.com. Today, I'm doing a review for Best Buy's blog on the new Epson Home Cinema 3200 4K UHD Home Theater Projector. So if you're in the market to get the biggest screen possible in 4K resolution, you've come to the right place. Let's go ahead and begin this review by taking a quick look at the design of the Home Cinema 3200. The Home Cinema 3200 is an absolute beast of a projector. It weighs approximately 14 pounds. It's about 16 inches wide, about six and a half inches deep, and about 13 inches in depth. So if you're gonna place this in the middle of a room, you're gonna need a pretty large room to accommodate a projector of this size because the screen size that it can project can range from anywhere from about, I'd say 100 to 200 would be the sweet spot, but you can get it larger depending on your throw distance. And that essentially is the distance from your screen to the projector lens. And so this is what would be called a long throw that's gonna even give you 4K resolution. Now, when it comes to setting it up, all on the top, you're gonna have these two dials that allow you to give some type of an adjustment after you've placed and figured out the distance, the, the long throw of the projector. And then from there, you can tweak it to get it right onto the screen that you're gonna be placing it. On the back is where you're gonna find all the inputs and outputs. You're gonna find two HDMI ports, USB-A power, audio out, mini USB service ports, and the power port. Now, the uh, USB-A is gonna allow you to power devices like a Roku stick. However, and this I found during the review, if you're gonna be hooking up a Google Chromecast, you're not gonna be able to power it on the USB-A port. If you do, you'll get an error message saying that you need to use the actual power uh, adapter that it came with. And that was something I wasn't expecting, but it's something that's worthy of know for all the Google fans out there. On the front is where you find the main feature, the projector lens. Now this lens can produce 2,900 lumens in 4K Ultra HD resolution. The life lamp is about 5,000 hours. So if you did the math, let's say you were doing about four hours of use per day, it'll last you about three and a half years, which in tech years is like a decade. So that's, that's gonna be quite long when you think about it, because come on, who's gonna use four hours a day anyways? Actually, maybe I would, but we'll get to that a little bit later. Now, right on the top of the Home Cinema 3200, are you gonna find all the menu buttons? And these are the same type of buttons you're gonna find on the controller. Speaking of the controller, it is huge, especially when I compare it to the Home Cinema 1080p controller that I have. And I actually kinda like it because the buttons are super clear and I think the average user out there is really gonna appreciate a big controller. You know, it's just, it's really easy to operate. Now that we've taken a look at the design, let's go ahead and talk a little bit about the setup because I had the perfect place to review this. I have a, an Airbnb suite, but it's like a high-tech themed Airbnb suite. And I already have the Epson Home Cinema uh, 1080p installed on the ceiling. So it actually has a dedicated projector wall. So what I did with the Home Cinema 3200 was just place it underneath. I already have the wall and I could also see the difference from 1080p to 4K resolution because like I said, the size difference between these two projectors is like a, a middleweight and an ultra heavyweight if it was like a boxer. So you're expecting to have great resolution and so I feel real privileged that I have the perfect place to review this. And let's go ahead and talk about that right now. So when you're setting up a projector for the first time, you're gonna have to give yourself some time to basically tweak it to get the image just right. And that's what I had to do over here. Basically, I placed the 3200 on a coffee table, but it wasn't high enough. So thankfully, I had the shoe rack that worked perfectly, and I put the 3200 right on top of that shoe rack, and then I just kind of adjusted the table until I could get that image relatively close to the center. 
From there, I used the top two dials to basically adjust everything, and then I twisted the lens to get it in perfect focus. After that, I'd say only about 10, 15 minutes. It was actually quite easy to do, and I was up and running in no time. So for this review, I used the Google Chromecast Ultra and a Roku streaming stick to basically assess the image quality. And as soon as the Google Chromecast Ultra booted up, it would play um, the, the photos that it usually shows in a gallery that just keeps rotating. And I was just absolutely amazed at the image quality. In fact, I just stood there in awe staring at this wall because of these beautiful photos were coming onto screen in 4k and you could even like get right up to the wall nice and close and the detail was just amazing you know i've seen 4k tvs i've even seen 4k projectors at the consumer electronics show but to see it in my own home in my own little suite like the wall it's like there was this 1k thing i just want to like walk right in it was just the it, it was a sight to behold. I just couldn't believe it. And then I forgot. I haven't even played a video yet. So then I went over to the Roku and started playing Our Planet on Netflix. And oh my God. You know, here I am trying to do this review, but I am literally just staring at this wall in awe, looking at these this footage and just, I don't even know if it was it was playing in 4K at that time. But it was absolutely stunning images. And this is all in the nighttime viewing, which you would expect a projector to do well uh, at night. But the 2900 lumens really stood out. The image quality was just second to none. You really get immersed. Like I'm trying to review this projector and I'm now watching Our Planet because I'm just like jaw dropped when I see these different scenes. Then I had this idea, gee, I wonder what 8K or footage shot in 8K macro would look on a 4K projector. So then I went on to YouTube on my phone, casted it onto the Google Chromecast, found a video of 8K footage, and again, absolutely mind blown by looking at this footage. I'm literally just staring there. I, I must have for like two hours just staring at this wall, looking at all this footage, just going, wow, wow. Wow, every image, every scene. I just could not believe that a white wall can be completely transformed by a 4K projector. Now, that said, immediately noticed some issues. One was because I had it sitting right at the table, anytime you walk across that projector, of course you're gonna see your shadows. If you go right up to the screen, of course you're gonna see shadows. Now, a lot of this I believe can be mitigated by mounting it right onto the ceiling. Because I had the 1080p and I noticed that you really have to walk like right in front of the screen to get uh, a shadow because it's kind of above you. And I think that's another reason why you would want to mount this. And it does have the mounting screws on the bottom to do that. That was the, the one issue that I, I kind of noticed. Another interesting thing that I found out when I played it was that there is no built-in speaker. You know, it does have Bluetooth audio out, it does have an audio out port, but there is no built-in speaker. So that tells me that they're assuming you already have a home theater uh, system if you're gonna get a home theater projector, so that's why they omitted Bluetooth. But um, the 1080p projector that I have that was just above this, that actually does have a built-in speaker, but no audio out. I should make a video on how you can get audio out because remember, there's audio in the HDMI signal. So there is a way to extract that audio and I got on a cool hack. And I should, I should do a video on that another time. So I was just curious when the image was out there, just exactly how large was this screen? So what I did is I took a little screw and I placed it right in the top corner, something that I could hook my tape measure. And then I went diagonally across just to verify what the screen size was in 4K. And I got a measurement of about 137 inches. So that's amazing. You are not gonna find a TV at the same price point as this projector that is gonna give you a 137 inch image in 4K. And that's why I am really leaning on the projector side, provided you have the space. And we'll talk a little bit about that a little later. So the image at nighttime was fantastic. The next question was how was the home cinema 3200 gonna do 
and the daytime because remember a lot of people if they're going to forego a television to get a projector they're going to still want to watch sports and a lot of sports are playing during daylight hours so that was the next test so the next morning i got up and i was all giddy to, to watch some sports on this because i have a dazen subscription or dazone i always call it dazen but I have a DAZN subscription, and so I started to play some football clips, some some uh, boxing clips, just to see how it would function in the daylight. And you know what? I have to say, I was very impressed. This could definitely replace a TV if you have the space for it to watch live sports and watch the big game. Now, the footage that I had recorded didn't, it, it seems like a little washed out, but I can tell you that's because of my camera. When I was watching it, everything was bright and it was just on its default mode because there's different types like eco mode and different viewing modes daylight mode that you can configure it i just kept it on the default one to see how it would function and it was pretty good now another thing that i found that was an issue for me personally and this is something i had the same issue with the home cinema 1080p was inside the control menus is they have this sleep mode and i was like perfect because I always fall asleep to Netflix. In fact, I'll play something within 10 minutes, I'm passed out. Well, that's not fun when you got a projector with that big bright light. It's gonna really prevent you from falling asleep if you start to doze off. So it'd be great to have a timer like you have on televisions. So I see the sleep mode, but I can never get it to work on the 1080p. I was hoping they fixed it on the Home Cinema 3200, but I don't, I don't understand how this sleep mode works because I'll put it like after one minute. And then I just sit and wait and nothing happens. So I don't really know what the sleep mode does, but I really wish it had the ability to just auto shut off like you would see on a television so that you could say, put it on for an hour and then you doze off and you know your projector has turned off. Another feature I wish this had was to be smart plug compatible. Now, what does that mean? Well, basically, you know those smart plugs where you can control by a voice or set schedules in your app that work with Google Assistant, Amazon Alexa, even Apple HomeKit. Well, this, you're not going to be able to use it because when you plug it, you have to press the power button physically. What this needs is like a dedicated kill switch, like an on off switch. Then you can just leave it on the on and then have the power go on and off to basically turn it on. If it had that feature, this would be perfect for setting it up with the smart plug because you could set schedules. And because like I was saying with the Google Chromecast, it would be amazing if I could just wake up every day to new wall art right on the, the wall because you don't really need to buy art if you have a projector. You can have art just changing all the time, especially with this 4K resolution. I guess the next question is, can you see the difference from 1080p to a 4K projector? And I can unequivocally say, absolutely. I saw a huge difference just by going between the two. The, the colors are so bright. You got crisp detail. Videos, even photos look great, not only in daytime, but in nighttime. It was just the most, one of the most amazing experiences. And I'm a, high, I'm a hard guy to impress, okay? I, I've seen it all, and rarely does like a, a piece of technology like change your life, like day-to-day -day type of life experience. If you're into like movies, if you love just looking at photos, just on the Google Chromecast as it cycles, like I do, you're gonna love this projector. But the thing is, you need the right space because my space is, is pretty large. I actually designed it around that wall because I was like, I will build a projector here and then I'm gonna build everything around this projector to have that experience. I have a Murphy bed and everything in this suite. So I had the perfect place, but if you have like a basement, it really depends on that, that the, the throw distance that you can get. If you can get a throw distance of at least eight to 10 feet, you're gonna have an excellent screen. Anywhere from like 100 images or 100 inches all the way up to maybe 150, 160. Just if you can go back, if you can have a longer throw, you're gonna have a longer image. And remember, this is 4K, so as your thing gets bigger, your image quality is gonna get compromised, but I think anything between 100 to 200 inches with the Home Cinema 3200 is gonna be fantastic in respect to its image quality. If you want the biggest screen and you got that space for it, I'm telling you, don't get a TV. Consider getting yourself a projector, something like the Home Cinema 3200. It's a little bit expensive, you know, on the high end, but so are high-end TVs as well. So they're comparable if you ask me. 
Well, I hope you enjoyed this review of Epson's Home Cinema 3200 4K UHD Home Theater Projector. That's a big name, and this is a big projector with a big screen, all in 4K resolution. I'm telling you, it will be sure to impress not only yourself, but your friends and your family. If you want the biggest screen possible and you got the space for it, this is something you definitely want to consider. Well, I hope you liked this review. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them below. And if you like the video, hit that like button and subscribe to this channel. You can find more information about me at handyandymedia.com. Once again, it's Andy Barrar, AKA Handy Andy, your DIY tech guy, signing off. See you again next time.